Welcome back to Learn MoGraph, and today we're going to be taking a look at extending scenes with Adobe Firefly and Photoshop. Adobe recently released their generative AI engine called Adobe Firefly. It's still in beta at the time of this recording, but you can access it at firefly.adobe.com, or the same feature set is available in the most recent beta release of Adobe Photoshop. Let's hop into After Effects and see how it's done. We have our first clip here and we're just going to drag this over to create a new composition and we're just going to rename this and just organize our project a little bit. And in our composition, we're going to press Command K on our keyboard and we're going to change this to a 9 by 16 aspect ratio. We'll go with 1080 by 1920. As you can see, our footage now completely fills the frame, but we kind of want to keep this composition with at least two of the kids in here. So we're going to frame it up about like this and we're going to snap it to the bottom of our composition using our line panel. If you don't have your Align panel, you can go to Window, Align, and we'll just center these two up right about there. And we're just going to move forward about five seconds in our timeline, and we're going to trim our composition, just so we only have a couple seconds to work with. Next, we're going to go up to Composition, Save Frame as File, and we're just going to call this Library Shot. We're going to keep the format as a JPEG, and we'll click Save. And we're just going to hit Render. Next, we're going to hop into Photoshop Beta. Now that we have our image open in Photoshop beta, we want to grab our rectangular marquee tool and we want to select the area that we want to extend our shot to. And we also want to include a little bit of the original image here, just so it has something to work with. And we're going to click Generative Fill. And we're going to leave our description here blank and just click Generate and see what it does. Alright, so our Generative Fill came back and it looks like we have a bunch more bookshelves back there. Um, but they're all kind of similar. So let's see what other options that it gave us. Our second option looks pretty good and it looks pretty believable and realistic. It even matches a little bit of the depth of field that we have going on here. Let's take a look at our third option. This is a bit too far for me. I don't need trees hanging out up top. So we're gonna go with our second option here and we're going to rename our generative fill layer and we're going to save our image as a PSD and that's going to maintain our different layers. And we're just gonna click save. Now we're going to hop back into After Effects. Now that we're back in After Effects, we're going to import our PSD with Command I on your keyboard, or you can go up to File, Import, File, and we're going to import LibraryShot.psd, and we're going to import it as Composition Retain Layer Sizes. And we're just going to click Open and OK. Now we're going to pop open our library shot composition and we're going to copy our fill layer from that composition and paste it into our base composition and we'll keep that right up top. Next we're going to select our footage layer and we're going to go over to our tracker panel and click track motion. If you don't have your tracker panel again you can go to window tracker. And this is going to open up our layer as footage and it's going to give us some track points because this shot does have a little bit of movement to it. It's very subtle, but if that movement falls out of line with our background, it's going to make the shot not believable. So we're going to track the position, the rotation, and the scale of this image. That's going to give us two different track points. And we're just going to take our track points and find areas that are good and high contrast that After Effects can easily track throughout the footage. There's this area up here on the bookshelf where it has a little bit of a shadow. That's probably a good tracking point. And we're going to move our second tracking point We'll expand that just a little bit so we can see it a little bit better. And I think our second tracking point we're going to put over on this shadow over here on the bookshelf. And we're just going to click Analyze Forward. Now that we have our footage tracked, we're going to go up to Layer, New, Null Object. And this is going to be where we store our track data. And we're going to click on our clip and click Edit Target and change our layer to track data press OK, and we're going to click Apply. And we're going to keep Apply Dimensions X and Y. Now we have our Null that's tracked to the shot and moves along with it. And we're just going to take our Fill layer and we're going to parent that to our track data. And just like that, our Fill layer is tracked to our shot. If there are any areas that the Fill layer might come outside of, you can always select all three of your layers and pre-compose those. And you can just scale this up like 2%. And that should keep everything within the bounds of your 9x16 frame. 
This next shot is a bit trickier because there's a little bit of rotation, a little bit of camera shake, and we have these extra objects that are around the edge of the frame that might make it hard for the AI to determine what should actually go there. So like before, we're gonna press Command K on our keyboard and change this to 1080 by 1920. And I think we want to frame him. We're gonna keep him up top. We're just gonna snap him there with our align tool. And again, we're gonna to go to composition, save frame as file. And we'll rename this to desk shot and click render and hop back into Photoshop. Now that we're in Photoshop, again, we're going to marquee select our work area down here that we want to fill in using Adobe Firefly. And we're just gonna click generate and click generate again and see what Adobe Photoshop comes up with. Hey, that's a pretty good match. Looks like the floor matches pretty well. Um, it did take part of the table and stick it over here for some reason, but let's see what the other options are. This is a nice clean transition. Um, it doesn't really have that wood texture that we're looking for. So let's take a look at what the third one is. And this is pretty clean as well, but there's also these random bits of table. So I think I'm gonna delete this layer and I'm gonna try selecting without any parts of the table. And click Generate a Fill and see what that gives us. All right, that gave us a much better image to work with. Looks like it sampled some of the wood that was around here. It's not perfect, but it looks close enough to me. The second option is also pretty good, but we lose some of the detail with the seams between the wood. And let's take a look at the third option. Okay, I think the third option is probably the best one that we have here because you get some of the seams and you get the wood grain. So we're just gonna label this fill layer and we're going to save this as a PSD and hop back into After Effects. All right, again, back in After Effects, we're going to import our deskshot.psd and we're going to import as composition retain layer sizes. I'm gonna hit OK and OK. We're going to open up our desk shot composition and copy fill from our desk shot composition into our footage. And just like that, it falls right down into place. We're gonna click on our footage track and do track motion. And again, we're gonna do position, rotation, and scale. We're gonna adjust our track points here. Luckily, there's a lot of detail on this table that's gonna be easy for us to track. So we're just gonna select these, maybe these paper balls that are there. And we're going to track this forward and backwards. I'm just gonna lay down a marker so I know which frame the fill should line up with. And we're just gonna track our footage. Okay, and again, we're going to add a null layer for our track data. Select our footage layer, edit target. I'm gonna apply the track data to our null object. Press okay and apply and accept X and Y. And once again, we can take our fill layer and we can parent that to our track data. And that should give us a pretty decent track, but because of the rotation, you can see that we have a little bit of area around here that is not covered by our generative fill. So what we can do is pre-compose our shot. And I think I'm going to take my anchor point and snap it to the top by pressing Y on my keyboard from my pan behind tool and enabling snapping. And I'm just going to snap that to the very top. And I'm gonna to scale up my shot a little bit and shift it over to the left just a little bit to make sure we don't have any gaps in our composition. We now took our 16 by nine footage, which ends about here, and we recomposed that to a nine by 16 shot. These are just a couple of simple examples, but this is a good way where you can take stock footage that wasn't necessarily meant to be in a social media format and alter it using generative AI technology.